let's add custom trades to villagers. New topics added to the Forge and Fabric courses such as tameable and writable entities, projectiles, throwable projectiles and boats, as well as first steps to biomes and dimensions. Courses linked in the description below. Alright, we found some back to tell you once more and in this tutorial we're going to be adding a custom trades to villagers, which is actually going to be a fairly straightforward process, all things considered. So for this, I will be making a custom class in the util package. You could, of course, also just add this to the uninitialized method, but I think keeping everything clean is a little bit better. So this is going to be the mod custom trades over here in this case. You could also make one big class. I've done this previously called the mod registries class, where you put all of this together. But overall, this is basic Java. So let's just make a public static void register custom trades method over here. And this will be called, that's very important over here. So this is going to be mod mod custom trades that register custom trades. This is the important part. And then we can add the custom trades right here. So how do we do this? Well, that is actually fairly straightforward. You want to use the trade offer helper right here dot. And you can see we can either do register villager trades offer or the register wandering trades offer. Let's first of all do the normal one, right? So this is going to be this is going to be for normal villagers. Here that you then say villager profession dot whatever type of profession you want to add this to. So let's say, for example, we want to add something to the farmer at level one. So that's the second parameter. And then the third parameter, you start typing in factories and you can see this is a consumer of a list of factories. Sounds pretty complicated, but in theory, the only thing we want to do is just to hit the tab key. You also want to add the curly brackets and then inside of the curly brackets, this is where we can add however many offers we want to the farmer at level one. So basically, this one will allow us to register trades specifically to the farmer at level one. So for example, we can say factories.add. And then here we want to start typing an entity. And you can see, once again, it suggests the, the factory to us. And we want to return a new trade offer. The trade offer has a couple of things that you need to add. The first one is the item stack that you pay with, basically. So usually this is going to be items.emerald. And let's say that, for example, it's going to be two items over here. Then we have the item stack that you get back. So this would be, for example, mod items dot tomato. And let's say you get a six, seven tomatoes. That's going to be okay. And then there's a couple of different parameters here. That's going to be max uses. We get the experience that the villager gets and then the price multiplier. I highly recommend what you do is you play around with these. This is going to be a 0.0 F. There you go. I highly recommend you play around with the numbers. And now if you wanted to add multiple trades to the first level of the farmer, you could just duplicate this because factories in this case is just a list, right? This is just a list and we just add something else to it. So for example, we can say for seven emeralds, you will get one tomato seed, for example, right? Something like this, but then you can only use it once or maybe twice, right? Maybe the farmer also gets a little bit more experience, maybe the higher price multiplier or something like that. And once again, this would be the farmer level one. If you wanted to add something to the farmer level two, you can just duplicate the whole thing, right? Just select it, press control D, and then changing the level right here to two. All of a sudden, these trades are now added to the farmer at level two. That's literally all that there's to it. It's actually not that crazy, right? We can also say, you know what? Actually, I want I want like 16 gold ingots and then you will get some corn seeds. Why not? You can do that. That's that's absolutely fine. You can even add a third item stack and that would then be a, another thing that you have to give them. So you can then, for example, say, hey, you know what? I also want like 12 diamonds. Now you have to give them 16 gold ingots and 12 diamonds to get one corn seed. Is this a good trade? Probably not, but it is kind of funny. Yeah, and if you want to do another profession over here, once again, you just duplicate this. You change the profession to, for example, the librarian at level one, and then we can add some other stuff. And now here comes the thing that's basically, you know, a lot of people are asking for, and that is, well, how can I add like an enchanted book? That is the one thing that a lot of people are asking for. So let's say what we want to do is we want, you know what, I want to, I want to trade. I want to be able to trade rubies over here, right? So let's get the ruby over here, oh, 32 rubies. And for this, I want to get a, you know, whatever kind of a custom book. So to do this is actually fairly straightforward. So instead of this item stack, what we can do is we can say enchanted book item dot, and you can see for enchantment and this is an enchantment level entry so you can just do a new enchantment level entry this needs an enchantment and a level so there's going to be enchantment start and then you can choose the enchantment so let's say for example we are going to get a piercing for this at level two and you can see all is well so basically this is going to return a new item stack with an enchanted book with this particular enchantment and that's all you need to do that's that's literally it. You now, maybe you can only use that like three times, but the merchant gets like a crazy amount of experience. And once again, you can change what you have to pay for this and you can change the level or the profession where this is being 
add it to. We can also duplicate this one more time. And then instead of the villager offers, we can also do the wandering trade offers. This, of course, doesn't require a villager profession right here. It only requires a level and then the factories. And then the same thing applies, right? So maybe here we want to get like raw ruby. And what are we getting from this? I don't know. Maybe a new item stack of mod items. And maybe we're going to get a metal detector. Yeah, there you go. So maybe a metal detector. And there we go. Now, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure that for the Wandering Trader, there should only exist two quote-unquote levels, and level one should just be the common items, while level two should be rare items, because in theory, the Wandering Trader doesn't actually have a level. So I'm not 100% sure where that comes from, but there we go. Let's just add this one as well here for level two. Yeah, and that, those are basically some examples here for custom trades. As long as the method here is called in the uninitialized method, we're all good to go. That's everything we need. So let's jump into the game and trade some new trades. All right, found stuff back in Minecraft and let's just see. And you can see that the farmer, for example, gets me some tomatoes over here. Now, the experience gain might be a little bit too much, but once again, with the numbers, you can always play around. Now, level two, we actually did not get any of our custom trades. That's, of course, totally a thing that can happen. So that's a thing you can keep in mind. You can see the piercing book two over here can be gotten with 32 rubies. That's awesome. And then here we have raw rubies for coal briquettes. That is pretty awesome indeed. And yeah, there you go. That is pretty much how easy it is to add a custom villager trade to Minecraft. And we're going to continue with the hiring in this video right here. We'll add a custom villager profession as well. Hope to see you there. So yeah.